Hey guys, um, I wanted to go through a few problems that you guys are probably going to see on your quiz tomorrow. So, um, first thing I wanted to show you, uh, well, basically, first thing I want to talk about is what sections are going to be on this quiz, and that's going to be sections 26 to 210. So, the last four sections that we've talked about. Um, so, the first thing I want to talk about. Um, section 26, that's when we're just doing the rates and proportions. Um, most of you, I, I, I feel are really confident that you guys are good at these basic proportions where all you do is butterfly, right? Three times 10, that'd be 30. And that's got to equal two times X. And then you just divide by two and the answer is 15. Okay? Most of you are really good at those. But remember, we're also going to see these kind of proportions as well, where you're going to do them the same way but you have to make sure when you butterfly and you have something like D plus three here, you have to remember to distribute that four through that D plus three. So that'd be four D plus 12. And you gotta do the same thing going this way. You have to make sure you distribute that three through that D plus 12. So that would be three D plus 36. From there, we solve it just like we did last chapter, where or earlier this chapter, where we're going to subtract, get all the d's on one side, so I minus the 3d, so that'd be 1d, still got that plus 12, still got that 36, and then I would just minus 12 from both sides, giving me 24 is my answer, okay? So, most of you feel pretty confident that that section um, it was a pretty easy section. But again, I recommend going back through the homework from that section on page 140, uh, sorry, one, uh, what page was that? That was page 119, uh, or one, sorry, 117, 118, those kind of things. Make sure you're good with all those types of questions, okay? Um, the next section was two seven, okay? And that's when we were doing some of the application ones. Well, the first one, remember, you know, that was when we have talked about those similar triangles. And yes, we're just going to set up a proportion with these, okay? But the biggest thing is you got to figure out what corresponds with what. And the easiest way with these triangles is go from this statement, right? Like we have side AB. Well, side AB, that's the first two letters. Well, AB has to go with rs so this a b this eight has to go with that rs over there that x okay so there's your relationship and then the a c well the a and the c are first and last so then that has to go with the first and last over there the rt so the five would have to go with the R and the T is the 12, and then again, it's just a basic butterfly proportion, okay? Remember, you have to have a relationship going up and down. The eight goes with the X, those sides correspond. You also have to have a relationship going sideways, right? The eight goes with the five, because that's in the same triangle, right? Another type of problem um, that you have to be able to do is with those shadows, right? If you have a flagpole and it has a 45 foot shadow, and then you have a person who's six feet tall and has a shadow of three feet, well, again, you can just set up that proportion. You know, X is to 45, you can do it that way, or there's my relationship, as the X, the vertical distance, has to go with the six. And again, you would just butterfly that problem just like the last section. Okay, so three times X, get that answer, 45 times six, and you might need to grab a calculator, figure out what that 45 times six is, get that answer of 270, and then divide by three, get that answer, and the answer would be 90, okay? Easy enough. Um, another type of problem that we talked about out of this section was dealing with scale factors, right? And remember, 
Yes, the scale factor basically means, like in this case, I have a rectangle, and the scale factor is going to be 2. Well, that means we're going to basically multiply everything by 2. So a set of 4, that's going to be 8. A set of 5, that's going to be 10. That part's easy. And remember, the scale factor for the perimeter is going to end up being the same as the scale factor for the sides. This is going to be the same as times by 2. Remember the way we find perimeter, just add up all the sides. So you got 4 and a 5, you'd have another 4 and a 5. So 9 and 9, the perimeter here would be 18. Remember, we can just multiply here, and I'll bet you this answer is going to end up being 36. All right, so remember 8 and 10 is 18. You'd have another 18, and sure enough, 18 plus 18 is 36. But remember, the scale factor for the area doesn't end up being times 2. Remember, the area is going to be times 2 squared, or 4. Right? That's the scale factor here. Remember, when you find the area, 4 times 5 is 20. The area here is not going to be times by 2. It's not going to be 40. It's going to be 80. Right? 8 times 10 is 8. 8. So... And the reason is, remember, the scale factor always gets squared as well, okay? So for the questions where they say, you know, what's the ratio of the perimeters? Well, the, it's going to be the same as the scale factor for the sides. If they ask you for the ratio of the areas, it's not going to be the same as the scale factor. It's going to be the scale factor squared. And remember, the same thing holds true for the problems where they do volume, right? Define volume, 2 times 3 times 4, so it'd be 6, that'd be 24. This is not going to be multiplied by 2, okay? Well, sorry, the sides would be multiplied by 2, so yes, that'd be 4, that'd be 6, and that'd be 8. But remember the volume, we actually, the, the ratio ends up being 2 to the third or 8 is really what we're going to end up multiplying by. And sure enough, if you do 4 times 6 times 8, you get 192. And 192 divided by the area of the first one, the ratio is 8, right? So remember. So we had those kind of problems. Um, and that's really it out of that section. So again, I highly recommend just looking back through the homework from that section on page 124. Make sure you're good on all those different types of problems, okay? Now, when we talked about section 2.8, we started doing the percentages. Remember, there was always two different ways we could do it. We could do the butterfly, or we went percent over 100, is over of, or we could do the equation method with the decimals, okay? Most of you liked it like this method usually. So the first one, find 75% of 40. Well, if you like that percent over 100 method, is over of, the 75 is your percent, the 40 is the of, and all you got to do is find x to find the is. And again, you can just butterfly that. I would do 75 times 40. Divide that by 100, and we would get 30 as your answer. Okay? Another way to do that, remember, is to turn that as a decimal. That would be 0.75. We're just going to end up multiplying by 40. That's what of really means. And I can just do 0.75 times 40, and I get the same answer. Okay? So either one of those two methods would work. Remember the equation method, you have to do decimal point, okay? Um, what percent is of 40 is 25? Again, you can use the butterfly proportion method. We don't know the percent. We, the 40 is the of, the 25 is the is, and again, I can just butterfly, right? Or you can do the equation, remember? We do the part, the 25, the percent we don't know, and then we do the 40. So in this case, we would end up dividing. But remember, if you divide to find the percent, right, that's how I'd solve that. You can get rid of a times 40 by dividing by 40. 
it's going to give me the answer in decimal form. And I have to remember to move the decimal twice, which would be 62.5%. You'll get the same answer if we do this. We do 25 times 100. Get that answer. Divide that by 40. Now this one gives it to us straight. We don't have to move the decimal. But either way, that's the answer. Okay. And again, we can do the same kind of problems with problems like this. 28 is 32% of what number? Well, if you like the percent of the butterfly problem, we know 32% goes with 100. 28 is the is, we don't know the of, and we can just butterfly. We would do 28 times 100, divide that by 32, 87 and a half is our answer. And again, if you wanted to, you could do it as the equation method. We would have the 28 is the part is, the decimal would have to be 0 0.32, times the of, which is the x, we don't know. And again, I could just do 28, oops, 28 divided by, because I have to solve for x, divided by 0.32, and again, I get the same answer, okay? And I don't care which of those two methods you like better, just pick one that works for you and go with it. The only other thing out of this section that you might run into on the quiz are these, write the percentages as a fraction. Well, 52% is just 52 out of 100. And then it's just a matter of reducing that fraction. I can divide by 2. That would be 26 out of 50. I can divide by 2 again. That would be 13 out of 25. Done. As a decimal, 52% will just be 0.52. Okay. Just got to move that decimal twice. That's really about it out of uh, Section 8 that you really got to see. Um, but again, I recommend going through uh, the homework. That one was on page uh, 130. Just make sure you're good to go off that section. Section 9, that was where we did the applications. The first ones were the commission type problems. Remember, your total pay is going to be whatever your base salary is plus the percent of your sales. So for example, I make $40,000 in salary plus 3% of sales. If I sell $90,000, what's my total pay? Well, my total pay is going to equal my salary, which is $40,000, plus 3%, that as a decimal, times the $90,000. That would be pretty, the easiest way to do that. So I would grab my calculator, do... $90,000 times that by 0 0.03, that's my commission. Add that to the $40,000 that I made originally, and the answer is $42,700. Okay, so make sure we're good with those. Um, the ones that a lot of people have been struggling with are these simple interest ones. And with these simple interest ones, this is your standard formula, I equals PRT. The unknown could be anything. I could say I made $200 in interest on an investment of $5,000. I don't know the rate, and I left it in for two years. Well, you can solve that for R by just dividing. So I could just do 200, oops, 200. How do you get rid of a times 5,000? You would just divide by 5,000. And then you have this times two, so I also have to divide by two. And that means R is equal to 0 0.02, which would be 2%. And remember, the time has to be in years. So if I say something like six months, the time would be a half. Um, but I could also give you a problem where I said, <clears throat> I made, you know, $300 in interest 
on a $6,000 investment at a rate of 4%, so 0 0.04, how much time must I have left that in there? Well, again, you just solve for T and you divide by 6,000, divide by 0 0.04. So I would just go 300, divide by 6,000, and then I would just divide that by 0 0.04. And if that's the case, I must have left it in, oops, I must have left it in for one and a quarter years, or if you think a quarter, how many months that is, that's three months. So that'd be one year and three months. Okay. Um, and again, this formula, the nice thing about this formula is any of the four variables could be your unknown. I could give you the principal, the rate, and the time, ask you for the interest, or I could ask, I could give you the principal, the interest, and the rate, and ask you for the time, or vice versa. So any of those four could be your unknown. So make sure you're good with that formula as well. Okay. Um, another type of problem we did in this section were the sales tax, where I buy an item for sixty dollars. Sales tax is about six percent. What's the end price? Well, the, easy, the long way is to do 60 times the 0 0.06, find the tax, which would be 60 times 0 0.06 would be 3.6. So I'm going to pay $3.60 in tax. And then you just add that 60 and the 3.6 to get 30 or $63.60. Okay? That's the long way. The short way was just to say if I'm paying an extra 6%, I'm paying 106%. And if you just do that multiplication, 60 times 1.06, it'll automatically add that in for you. So depending on what the question is asking, if it's asking for only the tax, I'd recommend this way. If it's asking for the total, that would be the easier way. Okay. And then the other problems that we ran into were the tips questions. Right. Let's say I take my wife out to dinner and the bill comes to $48.64. Well, and I want to leave a 15% tip. The book might want you to estimate once in a while. And if, the, if that's the case, just round that number. Eh, that's about $50. Okay. And then tip on that $50. Remember, you can do it as 10%. 10% of 50, just move the decimal one time, that's 5. 5% 5 would be half of that, which is going to be 250. And then you can just add those together, and it'd be $7.50. Okay? So that's the easiest way to do those. If you were going to do it precisely and use the 4864, I would do it the same way. I would say 10% of that would be $4.64, or uh, sorry, 86 cents. Just move the decimal over once, $4.86. 5% would be half of that, so that would be $2.43, which means 15% would be 9, 12, carry the 1, $7.29. Okay? So, but... Most people just estimate, just round it. Makes the numbers a little easier to calculate as well. So, so again, make sure you're good with that section. I would highly recommend going through, again, that page 135 assignment and just make sure you're good there. The last one is 210. Okay, that was all about the percent change. Remember, it's the change divided by the original. That's always how you do the percent change. Okay, um, but we got to be able to do. Uh, 
Questions like these. Find the result if 30 is increased by 20%. Well, remember with these, there's a couple different ways you can do them. Um, but when you do find the result when 30 is increased by 20%, the easiest thing to do is just find the increase. So if it's 30 times that by 0 0.2, well, 30 times by 0 0.2, which would be 6, and then add that increase. We're gonna, it says it's increased by, so we're adding it. So 36 is the answer. But you can also remember, think of it as, if it's increased by 20%, I get the whole original plus an additional 20%. So what I'm really getting is 120%. And again, if you just multiply that by 1.2 instead of 0.2, it will automatically add that in, okay? So either way works. And then the other type of question that we're gonna run, run into is actually finding the percent change. What is the markup on the pen that is bought for $8 and sold for 10? Remember, it's the change divided by the original. Well, how much did it increase by? It increased by 2, 10 minus 8. And we're going to divide by the original. So 2 divided by 8 is 0.25 or 25%. Okay? So, again go through some of those types of problems uh, in the homework. That homework was on page 141, and uh, we'll go from there. All right, guys? Um, I'll talk to you later.